Joker, Folie à deux, is the sequel to Joker from 2019, starring Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga. Let's talk about if this movie is safe, and then let's talk about if this movie is necessary. Welcome back to Movie Health Community, the internet's number one source of health warnings at the movies. All right, I caught an early screening of Joker Folie à deux last night, and I've worked a whole shift since then, so I haven't slept, but it's given me a chance to think about this movie a little bit before talking about it. But before we talk about the quality of this movie, let's talk about if it's safe for photosensitive audiences. The answer is a kind of disappointing no on this one. This movie has one main offender on photosensitivity hazards, and that is flashing cameras. They are used in several scenes by large groups of people, and these camera flashes do produce strobe effects when they're flashing all at once from these crowds. The first scene where this happens is much more mild, but the rest of them are pretty intense. And when you see this movie, you will know exactly what I'm talking about when I tell you that the first ones are really mild. The sound of these cameras is almost always accompanied by the sound of the shutters clicking. So if you stop hearing that, Pretty much every occasion except one, and I can't remember which one, I'm sorry. The end of that sound will mean that the flashing effects are done. In one of the first shots of this movie, there are lights that flicker on with a mild strobe, and then there are spinning style emergency lights that are used on quite a few vehicles in this movie. And when they're in the background, they do also cause a mild strobe effect. So for flashing lights, we are giving Joker Folie à deux a seven out of 10. In terms of motion, there are a few long shots where the camera does move a little bit as if it's handheld, and it feels like the hands that are holding it are shaking just a little bit. Then in terms of mental health, this movie is very violent and very bloody. Just like its predecessor, suicidal ideation is discussed extensively and depicted in one scene. Then one additional trigger this movie has is quite a few unwelcome and unwanted kisses, visibly unwelcome and visibly unwanted. There is also quite a bit of abuse of power and position in this movie. That about does it for the evaluation side of Joker Folie à deux. Now let's talk about whether this movie is good or whether this movie is necessary. Before I do that though, since this is still a pretty new channel, let me tell you a little bit about when I watched the first Joker movie. I didn't know whether or not I liked it or not on the first viewing. And spoiler alert, that is exactly how I feel about this sequel right now after one viewing. With the first movie, it ended up being that my favorite thing about that movie wasn't exactly something that most of the people who really liked it really liked, but more something that I was really noticing and latching onto as someone who loves the art of film. And that is, after every act of intense violence in the first Joker movie, it leaves you for a few minutes just feeling so nasty and so gross. Like what happened is just so unnatural. And if that is the reason that anyone doesn't ever want to watch that movie again, I don't blame you. That's a valid reason. It is an uncomfortable movie to watch. But just watching how that is crafted is such a treat for me. So that's what I love about the original Joker movie. So let's talk about Folie à deux. Man, I am so glad I have this pronunciation pulled up right ahead of me because I don't speak French, I speak Spanish. So let's start with the great. Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga, already established as great actors and great musicians, with Joaquin Phoenix having done the Johnny Cash movie and Lady Gaga being Lady Gaga. If all you know about this movie is based on the marketing, you may be surprised to know that this is a musical. And I know a lot of people don't really like musicals and they get really disappointed when they learn that a movie they've been looking forward to is a musical. In the packed IMAX theater I went to, I looked over to see if anybody looked disappointed when it became clear that it was a musical and nobody really seemed disappointed. So it seems like either people are coming around or people were pretty well informed on that. When this movie is a musical, it excels. This has some of the best and most well-imagined and well-thought-out musical sequences that I've seen in quite a while. The scenes that treat this movie as a courtroom drama are also very strong, although something happens at one point 
that makes that concept and turns it a little ridiculous, but in a comic booky kind of way, which when you're making a movie based on a comic book, that is not necessarily a bad thing. But the tonal shift and the shift in circumstances that happens, the justification they use for that gets a little distracting. And then finally, the creativity of the opening scene of this movie is just spot on. Now, one of the other major strengths of the original Joker movie was when they reveal, and I'm talking about a movie from five years ago. I'm going to talk about spoilers from that movie, but I'm not going to talk about spoilers from this movie. The reveal in the original Joker that a good chunk of it is taking place inside Arthur Fleck's head and retroactively recontextualizes a lot of what you've seen that is a wonderful moment, and I was really hoping for a moment like that in this sequel. That does not happen here, unfortunately. We are always very confident in exactly what is real and what is happening inside Arthur Fleck's head. One of the big things I was worried about with this movie is that... Harley Quinn was going to make the Joker more of a side character, kind of the way Furiosa did with Mad Max and Mad Max Fury Road. That doesn't happen here. This is still a very Joker-centric movie, and Harley Quinn is very much a supporting character in this movie. I would love to see more of Lady Gaga playing the character, though, because she was just as phenomenal as Margot Robbie is. And they play such different takes on the character that they can exist simultaneously and both play future performances in these roles. Assuming Margot Robbie gets to stay in the new rebooted DC universe. The one thing I will say that this movie does absolutely superior to the first one is the cinematography. The cinematography in this movie is gorgeous. The framing, the lighting, and just the total composition of these shots really stands out as a marked improvement over the first one. That's about the only thing that I can confidently say this sequel does better. I feel like I can safely say right now that this is not a superior movie to the first Joker movie. But this movie has enough going for it that I cannot wait to see it again and see what I missed and see how my opinion evolves on subsequent viewings. That has been a really fascinating experience as I've rewatched the first Joker movie. So I am going to give Joker Folie a deux a B plus. Thank you so much to our readers on Tumblr and Facebook, and as always, an extra special thanks to our patrons over on our Patreon page, whose names are scrolling on the screen like credits right now. Special welcome to Gus, who joined earlier this week on the $5 tier. As a reminder, nothing produced by Movie Health Community is medical advice, nor has any of it ever been reviewed by any medical professionals. Be sure to leave a like on this video, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when we post new videos, and leave a comment if you have anything to add to this discourse, especially if you disagree with anything I've said. We love hearing from you. And as always, stay safe at the movies.